Right, here we go. It's timing belt time. I've had a, <laughs> been having a bit of a problem with my camera. I think it's on its last legs because uh, it just rebooted itself in the middle of me chatting away to you. So, today's the day we're going to get on with the timing belt. That's right. Now, today we're fitting a Britpark timing belt. Yes, that's right. No expenses spared, even on the cheap photocopying that's got the lines down here from the laser printer. No, no expenses spared. In fact, there must be a girl in the office drawing these lines on. That's, 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 that's quality. So why am I fitting a Britpark timing belt kit? Well, this is the OEM kit. It's not the common garden kit. This has got the uh, Aina pulleys on. These are made in, oh, it's upside down, something like that. These are made in Slovakia, so we're getting a bit closer to home. And it's also got a deco belt. Now, for one of our viewers, I can't remember his name now, but he was kind of interested in the comments about deco belts. And he can tell from here, let's come back a bit, where it was, well, we know it was made in Italy, but we can tell the date and all sorts and pieces off this belt. So no doubt he'll write to me about that. Anyway, so it's a new kit. Uh, everything's like I say, is OEM. And it even comes with a little fitting kit and in the box there's a gasket. Now I don't care if the gasket's a, a, a cheapy one, but it doesn't look to be, wait a minute, I'll get it out. Oh, it isn't. It's, uh, it's not a cheapy gasket because it's got a little bit of so-called sealer around here. Now one of the things you've got to know about a gasket is there's a very interesting little tab here. I'm, I'm not opening it yet because I'll probably lose it. You can see there's a little raised bit here. This was to show there was a modification on the belts done. You know, the early, like this one here, it was the early edition belt. Wow, well, dude, that, <laughs> there's people fitting that gasket all the time. That's the only one that's available now. Anyway, let's get on with it. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to read, if we can, the instructions on this sheet. So it says, thank you for purchasing this timing belt. Yeah, right. In effort to remove improve fitment, read the read the instructions carefully. Yeah, all right. Right. So it says when fitting the new idler pulley stud to either the front cover or the original cover, ensure that the front the stud hole there is a two by two millimeter by forty five degree chamfer. If there is not one present, produce one using appropriate countersink tool. Now, in my life, I do not understand why they always give you in the kit. A stud and an, and an allen bolt. Well, I know why the allen bolt is here, but a stud and a nut for here because the stud in the kit's exactly the same. Uh, I can never kind of work that one out. But anyway, what it's asking for is a chamfer on here and a little chamfer on there. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Right? Now, you, when fitting, do no, not use the original spacer washer, that's this one, if you've got the old kit. Now, after 25 years, a lot of these belts have been uh, changed. So, it's kind of irrelevant, you don't really see these. These go in my washer box, and they're kind of handy for spacers. So don't fit that. This has been replaced by the stud and nut and a new design pulley, idler pulley. Discard the original slotted washer, that's this one here. You don't need that, but that, again, that goes in my special washer box. And you don't need the bolt either. All right, so you don't need those bits. It's all in the kit. Uh, discard the original slotted washer and flange bolt when fitting the new tensioner. Please use a short M10 cap head screwed supply in the kit. Right, so that's easy. That's easy. We can work that out, can't we? We're not stupid, otherwise we wouldn't be here, would we? Uh, when fitting the timing belt, ensure that the timing marks are aligned and the appropriate pins are used. Exhibit A, pin for pump, and in the back of the engine I've put already the spring-loaded timing pin. Now, we'll come to that in a minute, but we'll just breeze through these instructions, just so we're as clear as mud. Uh, fit the idle, no, we're not going to do it their way, we're going to do it my way, like Frank Sinatra. Fit the idler pulley and tensioner assembly and tighten to 45 newton meters. Loosen the three injector pump pulley fixings. That's. Oh, wait a minute. 
that's those here. So make sure this moves. All right. Just make sure that moves, and you'll be fine. Because otherwise you have a right struggle getting the belt on. The belt is just big enough to squeeze over the pulley, but if you do it my way, Frank Sinatra, you'll get it on right. Um, lightly turn the tensioner locking screw and then back off one full turn, ensuring the tensioner is free to move. Alright, so what that means is this. I'll go and get it. So you want that so it's free to move. You can't, you can't go wrong really because it will move anyway. Um, Right, so that's that, we know about that. <sighs> Tans ten uh. Use a dial type torque meter with a maximum length of 250 millimeters. Apply a torque of 11 Newton meters at the torque meter positioned vertically. Now, this is a bit of a controversial subject because over the years, timing belts have come looser and looser and looser. Um, I can't remember what, the last one was like 15 Newton meters, now they've come down, down to 11. But in the old days, a lot of people, when they got these engines, they over tightened the timing belt, you know, thinking that was the right thing to do. What it does is it twists the cover. A lot of people have had problems with timing belts running off, and that was the reason why. The, the, the cover was bent. All right, so just be careful of that, so it doesn't need much. Now, I've got a dial indicator thing so I can set it up a little bit better. Uh, tighten the injection pump pulley bolt, so oh, wait a minute, tighten the tensioner locking bolt to 45 Newton meters, tighten the injection pump pulley fittings to 25 Newton meters, that's those, put it on again, that's those here. Uh, rotate engine uh, by hand two revolutions and check the timing pins fit correctly, remove timing pins. Uh, on new vehicles, fit a new crankshaft front seal to the front cover plate, see information below, refit cover plate and remaining covers and ancillaries as detailed in the workshop manual. Yeah, there's, on the front covers themselves, there are different types of seals. They're really sort of only a dust seal or something like that. They're not really an oil seal because there's no oil in there, but... Like I say, not many people go wading or anything like that. But if you do, well, you obviously need it and put the wading plug in. But if you don't put the wading plug in, I'm looking at one right now, here. So, so there's the seal. This one's a pretty ratty one, because I'm going to replace it anyway. See that one? It's a bit ratty. This is a later cover, and they put the seal on the outside. But... If you don't put the wading plug in, if you're going through water, well, you're completely wasting your time because water's going to go through here rather than through the seal. Let me dig this other one out and I'll show you the difference in it. See, this is the earlier type that was fitted to this and you can see the seal is on the inside. Bugger to replace if you need to replace it. But again, if you don't put the plug in, what's the point? So, with that little preamble over, Let's get on to it, and I'll tell you a few little tips and tricks that they don't tell you. Now, I am using a good pulley from another kit. I'm going to keep this one wrapped up in its bag for another day. For the simple reason... Oh, there goes my boiler. Sorry about that interruption. I've been having problems with my boiler. It's, um, when there's no demand for heat, it just seems to get too hot. Um, I'm just sort of testing it before winter and it's not cold enough so it can't lose heat. Oh, it's a different matter. Right, no, so let's get back onto this because I completely forgot where I was. So what we're going to do is going to fit the belt but we're going to do it like my way, Frank Sinatra, etc, etc. So what we're going to do first of all at the back of the engine, got our timing pin down at the bottom in there. Look, can you see it? Oh, now bloody phone's going at it. It's election day today. See, council elections, they want you to vote for them. They can go and get stuff. Right, so where are we? <clears throat> Here we are. There's the timing pin notch. There's the timing pin. We're going to turn the pulley in direction of rotation until that clicks in. Thus. Now we can turn this back round. And we can have a look at the front. Because this is really important. The 
taken the pulley off. The reason why I had the pulley on was to get a bit of leverage when I was turning the engine over. But also, when you fit the pulley, it's kind of tight to go into the oil seal at the back. So a lot of people get problems with the belt running off, thinking it's off. So what you really want to do is put the pulley on first, just nip up the bolt, brrr, that tighten it on a little bit, and then back it off and you'll see this pulley go right further back, if you see, right back until it's on there. Now, now you may see that there's a little arrow here in the key there. That's just a you know, verification that we are on top dead centre. So the next thing, we're going to sort of try and fit this belt. If the phone doesn't go off or the fire alarm doesn't go off, I don't know what's going to happen. So let's get an Allen key, let's get a belt and let's get set up. Right, so we've got a 15mm socket on here and we've got an Allen key here which is an 8mm. Now, we're going to go completely opposite to what they say on the instructions. We're going to get our pulley. Let's go like this. That's, you probably can see this better. We're going to put the pin through there. We're going to wiggle this around a bit until we locate it. There. So what we're going to try and do is put there's a, there's a boss on here, we're going to put it through the hole, like that. So, it will move, but it, you'll feel it, it drops out, there we go, that's in. So then, you get the nut, actually we'll put it on the end of the gun. There we go. <laughs> I'll try and be clever there. A bit tricky to do. And I'm trying, I'm just waiting for the bloody phone to go off again. There we go. So I'll just nip that with your fingers and just make sure that that hasn't come out. Alright? Give it a nip. Just a little. And even when you nip it up, you'll find that that is still loose. Then, this is the clever bit. We're going to put the, uh, the bolt through here, the Allen bolt. Now, which is its tension bit? That's its tension. So we're going to put it like that so the belt hasn't got any tension on it. Oh, wait a minute, is it that way? That will find out. Uh, which way is it now? Is it down there? It goes like that, like that, like that. Yeah, so that's when it's at the bottom, <laughs> there's no tension on it. And we're going to nip it up, then we're going to take this out. And now you will see that that's located here. So if you look at the pulley, you'll see there's a slot in here and there's a slot in this wheel at the back. You, you want it sort of in the middle if you can when you put the belt on. So that's going to be easy. Now we need to get a 22mm key. Oh, it's up here. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. You get a 22mm key for your pump and your pin that you've lost up over here. And turn your injector pump against its spring and put the pin in all the way. Notice that you can still turn this pulley. I'll zoom, I'll zoom out a bit because this damn thing's moving all over the place. How's that? So just to recap, tensioner on together with its idler, tighten this bolt up down at the bottom, take the idler off and then uh, put your injector pump pin in. Next thing we've got to make sure that this little protrusion here where the bolt goes through, there's a little arrow on it, make sure it lines up with the arrow for the cam and put the belt on. Why do we do it like this? Because we can get it on easier. <laughs> now, what we've got to do is bring that belt back a bit, move it around, keep moving it, we want to make sure that this 
belt here is in the middle. Right, so what we've got to do is pull this belt across here and get some tension on it. All right. Now look, pay attention to this bottom pulley because this is where a lot of people catch a crab. The, the, the belt isn't tight against there. Then once you've got that tight, you know, once you've got the belt on, slip the pulley on. How simple was that? No tears, eh? Now all we've got to do now is tension it up. We're going to do this... I'm going to just have a break here because no doubt the bloody phone's going to go again and somebody's going to walk in. Then we'll, uh, we'll tension up the belt, get set up and then we're good to go. I'm quite fortunate to have one of these uh, dial type of uh, gauges here. This is in inch pounds but I've worked out 97 inch pounds, 11 newton meters and I use this all the time. I just put a little adapter in there because this is 3 8 to a half inch and this fits into this little square here, like this. So then one, what we're going to do now is back off the tension that I put onto this bolt here and then, kind of easy really, back this, oh, back this off, take this to 11 newton meters, it is not much, right? Now we don't have to do that one yet. Don't forget your little adapter stuff in there. <laughs> then, this is a clever bit, we take the pin out of the back. And we're going to tighten down oh, these bolts here. I should have zoomed in a bit better, shouldn't I? Right, so, we've just taken the pin out. Now we're going to nip down these bolts here. And again, they just need a little nip. Not now fancy. Whilst we tension it down. So we're just going to use a gun just to rattle them down a bit. We'll talk about it properly later. And then we can take out this pin. And you can see how sort of loose this belt is. What we're going to do now is put the pulley back on when I find it. That's it. Bolt in. We put the pulley on because it uh, it acts like a spacer. We'll fasten that down. One of these days. And then, using our long bar, which is here, which has gone missing again, I'll just use a, just use a ratchet, come on. I'm going to turn this engine over. Oh, I've got a good compression. I'm going to turn it over twice. Now we'll get hold of our, in, our pin and we'll put it in the back again. Wait a minute, we have a fire wheel. Oh, we're good one again. That falls on the floor, that's alright. Now this time it should lock up. Now if our pin goes in, not quite, ooh, well it will, we'll just move them bolts a little bit, we'll just turn it so our belt goes in like that. I'm going to check that again. 
because that's an old Nation 2. Mm -hmm. yeah, see if it's, if it's a close, I'm going to take the pin out in the back and double check it. This is so much easier to do it here than under the car. Right. We're also made sure here that our mark is absolutely spot on down here. So let's turn it twice more. Let's not drop the drill. God, what a day. It's Sunday morning. You would have thought it would have been quiet, wouldn't you? Man, Luigi. So let's turn that until the pin lines up. Just go slow. There we go. And there's the pin going to go in this time. Yes. So that's good. Now, what we're going to do now is retension the belt. I hope. Let me get our gauge. Now I need to look at this. Well, look at it while I'm doing it. See, got an extra bit. Then we're going to tighten this down to 25 newton meters. No, 45, 45 newton meters, 25 newton meters for these bolts. Let me get set up for that. So here we go. Well, that's a bit far out actually. That's for that one. Still in here, we're going to just nip these bolts up to 25 newton meters. There we go. Just snug them up. You don't need to be monster tight. And that is our setup done. Now, are we finished? Not quite. If you could remember this engine before, oh, I'm so nearly. It's not my day today. <laughs> anyway, um, if you could remember before, the timing was well advanced on this engine. So what we're going to do now, just for fun, for a lot of people back on YouTube land, we're going to set up our dial gauge again on here. Might have to take this strap out because it gets in the way. We've got to turn the engine round a full turn. Always turn engines in direction of rotation. Never turn it backwards once the belt's on. Very important. So we'll get set up and we'll check what the uh, lift timing is on this. Because I haven't adjusted anything on this pump at all. Nothing. Nada. So let's have a look and see what that's right, like. Here we go. We're going to test the uh, timing. See what we get last time. It was uh, two millimetres last time. So here we go. I've got the pin in at the back. There we go. So there's one millimetre. Ooh! 120! Whoa! Now there's a surprise. So now we're in a bit of a dilemma. Uh, this was showing 120 on the gauge. However, with a bit of messing about, I just realised that uh, there was something wrong because this here is a, an exhaust gas recirculation pump. The setting should be 120, uh, 140, 1 1.4 millimetres lift. And for a non-EGR should be 1.54. Now 
Now, I, I said earlier it was a 1.56, which didn't really matter all that much. But the difference is the internals of the pump, uh, to make it more hmm, environmentally friendly. Um, but I'm, because the, the, it's very difficult, because I think the injectors are non-EGR, and this is an EGR pump. So what I'm going to do is I found out something very interesting. Although I turned the engine over and I got to a point of 1.2 before the pin clicked in, the pin is very loose. Now, how am I going to film this? Ah, here we go. Now, how are we going to do this? Let's see, because you need to see the, the pin, and not me. Down here, you need to see how far I'm moving. Can you see the gauge here? So focus on the gauge a little bit for now. I've got the pin in here, but look at the gauge. Look how look look when I move the spanner against the slackness of the pin. So I can just to say I get 154 with the pin in, and I'll tell you something, boys and girls, that is where it's going to go. The reason for that is that. That's with the pin in. If I have the pin out, I can move it even more. You see, look, there's a pin out. It's dropped down to 150. Put it back in again. 150, 154. So, the nice thing is about this little setup escapade is I can get access to this with the engine you know, it, when it's in the car, I can take the little front cover off and move it just a hair. I don't think I need to. I'm going to set it up at 154 as standard. And we'll see how it goes. Well, that's all she's getting. The thing is, we've got bags of room to move that pump around a little bit. But we certainly were a long way behind two millimetres lift. That was way, way out. No wonder it was knocking. Uh, the, the only downside about advancing, retarding the timing a little bit by moving the pulley is... You could be a little bit down on power. But then again, for a rebuilt engine, that's not a bad thing. Now, um, there are ways and means of timing an engine, or checking the timing, uh, electronically. When you get your injector lines in, you can put a little, uh, what is it, like a piezo type sensor or something like that, on the line, and it will fire off your, your strobe light. I mean, they're kind of expensive, <laughs> they're about four or five hundred bucks. So we're not going to buy one of them, but I think we're good enough to go. I've got to just check, double check all my bolts on this thing. Uh, and remember to take the pin out the back. I think, we, I think I'm quite happy with that. I think we've covered enough for today. I think, my, you know, that was kind of uh, in depth, wasn't it? All we've got to do now is put the cover on. That's easy, isn't it, really? Don't need to know much there. And um, then we can go on the next thing.